my biggest dream and my biggest hope and aspiration is that Nigeria will be will fully manifest the true greatness within it in my lifetime. And so for me, it's no labor at all to spend time building the next generation because that's what it will take. If you get 10,000 young people thinking right, and the 10,000 young people commit to real change. And as each one influences the next 10 in a paid forward system, we will not have the same country. And I'll show you a few statistics so that it's not even about you. My favorite color today is green. So those of you that are in green, you're my constituency. You are the reason I left my house at 6.30 a.m. today to get here. And I've had a crazy week. I was in the board meeting all day yesterday, and it's just been a crazy week. But this is important because you're important. I want you to understand that whatever you see of Nigeria today is a question of how everybody else before your time has handled it. Whether some have done it successfully, some have failed. And by the way they have handled it, we have the situation that we have. We are all accountable. But however, you can forsake the things of the past and look forward to a future. And it's your future. As of 2015, 20% 20 of Africa's population was between ages 15 to 24. As, of, as at that same time, 20% of the world's youth population was resident in Africa. Move the age group to 15 to 35. It changes to 75% of Africa's population which is equivalent to 42% of what youth, world's youth population by 2030. That's what we would have. It is expected to continue to grow throughout the 21st century, more than doubling from current levels by 2055. What that tells you is Nigeria would essentially be a nation of young people. Now, that has value. When a businessman evaluates the population, he's excited. When policymakers who decide on how a nation is built, look at those numbers, they should be excited because it means that we have a large population of able-bodied, productive age group that can change the country. But it can also change it the other way as well, which is why what this university seeks to do is important. Because it's about how you utilize that generation and their mindset. It's about how you see what your future is. You can choose to look at Nigeria today and say there's no hope in Nigeria for you. You lie. You can choose to look at Nigeria today and every problem that you see, you identify it as an opportunity for you to be great. Why? Because every problem you see needs a solution and nobody is going to come from anywhere else to, make, to give us the solution but you. But we will only have that solution if you understand enough to know that because you will form the largest portion of this country, the country that you are allowed to emerge from now on, that you are accountable for it, is the country that you will live in. Forget what the older people have done. Don't get caught in the failures. Don't get caught in saying there's no hope, there's nothing here. I've lived all my life in Nigeria. I went to a Nigerian university with pride. I went to a Nigerian secondary school. All 
all my key education is in this country are so many other people who were taught enough to do great things. So whatever it is that I'm able to do with my life right now, I was taught here in this country. And you have even had a better opportunity because you have had education in an institution that has empowered you for your generation. Now, what will you do with it? Between Nigeria and Africa, whatever it becomes is what you make of it. Not what somebody else has made of it. It's what you make of it from now on. It's what you choose to do with it despite what you have inherited. Because there are many people that have built great businesses in Nigeria over the last 30 years. When I was starting my first business, power was a problem. Power is still a problem. So imagine if 30 years ago I was waiting for power to come. The time and season to create would pass. Why am I making that point? So don't give me any excuses. What you are going to do with your life is despite the challenges that you see. Because challenges do not destroy vision. They empower, they drive, they, post, they push you to be creative. They encourage you to find solution to impossible. They make stars of you. Because when you solve impossible problems, you become a star. So it's about what you see. Don't allow anybody to becloud your vision by telling you how terrible this country is. How much you cannot make anything good in this country. Oh, there are real problems. I have lived through those problems. There are real challenges. There are real things that will seek daily to stop you. But there's nothing big enough to stop a driven, ambitious, persistent, tolerant, God-driven human being. There are, day by day, you are going to have to make choices. You are going to have to decide who you want to be. You owe it to yourself to have a sense of the purpose of God on your life. To have a sense of the vision of who you think you are and where you want to go. And to commit to the process of protecting that vision by persistently and consistently moving the cheese. By never allowing circumstances to overcome and to overwhelm you. By knowing that you will have troubles... There will be challenges. There will be what the world calls failures. But guess what? In my books, there's nothing called failure. You do not fail until you are dead and you have not accomplished your goal. At different seasons in the course of your life, some things will not work out as you want it to be. But that will only be a stage. It's the cumulative result of your, all the seasons of your life that will be the legacy of your life. So even if one season does not work, I'm telling you now, because those seasons will come. Don't let anybody tell you you have failed. Take the word out of your dictionary. Every time it hasn't worked out, take the lesson from that stage and move on. Find out what you needed to know that you didn't know or what you need not to be doing that you are doing and decide what you need to do next and take the next step. See, when I was in secondary school, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. Then I found out that they work with real dead bodies. Ah, I changed my mind very quickly. I then thought, you know what? I'd like to be an architect. I was good in sciences and art. A problem if parents sentence you to science when you're, you're good at both. So I ended up in Ife to study chemistry. By the end of my first year, I realized how much I hated chemistry. I could pass it, but I didn't love it. So then I thought, you know, I'd, I'd make a good lawyer. I debated throughout school. I used to represent my school in school's debate. 
So everybody knows that I can win an argument. So I gave it everything trying to change the law. I used to go and sit outside the door of the dean of law. And then one day the man said, come, what do you want? I want to change the law. Is that why you've been sitting outside of my office? Yes, sir. Okay, if I only take one person from another department next year, it will be you. Great. Make sure you pass very well. Well, therein lies my problem. Pass very well and what will happen? Chemistry will not release me. Fail in chemistry, law will not take me. Catch 99. So, I decided anyway, by the end of that year, I changed my mind about law. I decided I wanted to be a chartered accountant so I could go and work in a bank. So I pursued my, I continued with my chemistry, but I started taking free electives in faculty of administration and accounting. When I finished, don't celebrate yet. <laughs> when I finished for youth service, I did everything to make sure they sent me to an accounting firm. They first sent me to a Muslim school to go and teach. That was easy to solve. I just wore a dress off my shoulder. I went to report. I was immediately rejected. <laughs> Once they rejected me, I went back to the posting room and waited there for days until they sent me to Akintola Williams and Co. You would have thought that having done all, gone through all that trouble, accounting would be the love of my life. When I got there, within the one year of my youth service, I realized how boring accounting is to me. <laughs> because they had all the processes somebody else had thought about before. All I had to do was open old dusty files from company to company without imagination or initiative. I'm a very restless human being. That was not going to work. So I finished the work. I did well. They offered me permanent employment, but I said, thank you, but no thank you. Why? Because at that moment, I had come to a realization that that was not the vision for my life. Now, sometimes, some of you at this moment think you know who you are. You think you know where you want to go. It's good to have an idea and have a sense, but be open and be flexible. Because life will reveal itself to you at different stages. Respond to it as it opens itself to you. Understanding. Understanding that for those who are Christians, the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And your life, they are in seasons. So different seasons will reveal different parts of you. You must be the master of your life by having the capacity to respond and to change. So I left and came back. Where was I going to? I didn't know. But I knew what I did not want to do. I did not want to be an accountant again. I thought I still wanted to work in a bank. But the first job I could find one week after was in a furniture company. So I went there to kill time. My kill time project has resulted in 30 years of investment of my life in building a manufacturing group in furniture. So it was never the plan of my life. So some of you, you will accidentally find your purpose or the areas of your calling. Some of you have studied the same degree that will lead you to your greatness, that's fine. But in your heart, when you go to bed at night, be true to thyself. Parents, thank you very much for your guidance and your support to this day. Some of these children have studied degrees that are for you. You see? Because that's what you wanted. I, they're here. I'm not saying it behind them. I'm saying it in front of them. My father will explain that to you if you were here. Go to them after today. Kneel down, prostrate. Thank them very much for the choice and for the investment and for the opportunity they have given you. Give them the certificate and go and make something of your life. What has your education done for you? Your education has empowered you. Your education has opened your mind. Your education has taught you processes to be disciplined, to apply yourself, to think outside of the box. It's allowed you to see various options. But it does not define everything that you will be. It only, is only an enabler of where you can go to. It's only shown you, and if you listen very well to Bishop's speech, he told you that at five years, all this degree, after, in fact, in your generation, five years is a bit long, sir. Every year or two, 
your education becomes what? Outdated. Because things are changing fast in your generation. So you need to be on top of it. You must be open to knowledge. You must continuously learn. But more than anything else, you must apply your talents combined with everything you have been taught. Now, the certificates and the education has its place. But guess what the th real things that will separate you outside? Your character, your personality, how you handle human beings, your ability to respond to situations, your ability to be creative in every impossible situation, your ability to engage with human beings with respect and a sense of dignity, knowing that every human being, rich or poor, small or big, counts. That not your neighbors, not the son of the minister or the son of the governor that you know. No, that the son of your house help, the son of your father's driver, that the gates man in your house. Every single human being that you will meet will count in your life because you do not know where you will meet them again. Human beings are mobile. They change form every season. Thus, the rich or the poor man at your gate could have an exceedingly smart, naturally smart son. Who does not have the opportunity, but who is able to apply for scholarship into Covenant and get through it and apply through British Council for a scholarship to Cambridge and comes through it and comes back and is the only graduate from their segment of their state. And when they are allocating something for their state, he becomes the star. And before you know it, he's sitting in a place where even you, with all your opportunities, you haven't sat. But if you did not greet him well before, because you think you belong to a certain social class, then you have missed the opportunity of a lifetime. Because human beings are mobile, you must treat every human being like a treasure of God that they are. Everywhere you will be in life, every place you will go, there will be a man or a woman speaking for you or against you. And it will be about when they encountered you, what legacy you left with them. So in your walk of life, Realize that human beings count. And it's not about who they are now. It's about who they can be that you do not know. Because even you do not know just how far the Lord will take you or the places you will sit. You will have a sense of it. But time will always unfold and reveal many things about you. There's something I want to take you through. It was written by Gandhi. One of his things that was important to him, he said, don't seek wealth without work. Don't. The fact that you see many people that seem rich around you, but you cannot account for their wealth, don't seek to be like them. Because we know many that have come and have gone. Those kind of wealth do not last generations. They do not even last decades. They come today, they disappear tomorrow. When you search the Bible, you will see how the palm tree and the grass. I shall not turn this into a sermon. Do not seek pleasure without a conscience. Whatever you think will give you joy, don't do it at the expense of another. Be careful because human beings, people count, people matter. Have pleasures of life that is comfortable and good, but allows you to still be accountable for how you influence or affect the lives of others. Do not seek knowledge without character. What they've taught you here is knowledge with character. Because it doesn't matter if you got first class. If you're a man that cannot be trusted, you will not go far. It does not matter how brilliant or how smart you are. With all the brilliance and the smartness, if you commit a fraud in a bank, you will sleep in jail for many years. It doesn't matter how great you are. They tell you that a, single, a tiny hole can sink a ship. The tiniest of all that can sink you is the hole of character. And don't convince yourself that is not true in Nigeria. Because remember, seasons change. Seasons change. What seemed acceptable yesterday, tomorrow a new wind can come. But those that do the right thing always will always be current for all seasons. And it will be great. So don't seek 
for knowledge without character. Don't seek for commerce without morality. You're a school that teaches entrepreneurship a lot. So don't seek to build business at all costs. Don't want to make profit off another man and forsake what is right and what is wrong. Do not seek science without humanity. Even as you innovate, always take it back to the influence and the impact of your innovation on your communities and on human beings. At the end of the day, last week I was speaking at a conference in Barcelona, sir. It was called uh, the European Conference on Conscious Capitalism. And I was invited to speak on the African uh, view of it. And my point is, I showed them a picture of when we were trying to recruit for the immigration services, if anybody remembers. And the whole stadium was filled with people applying for how many slots. And some people died. Somebody made money off that. <laughs> but the part of science and humanity is this. How do you even, we're in the season where with artificial intelligence and technology development, many factories don't need many human beings because there's so much efficiency you can achieve with artificial intelligence and machinery. There's the biggest factory assembling all your mobile, um, iPhone in China. By setting up one factory, sir, one million jobs were eliminated. Robots all the way. The question is, what do we do with the human beings that were eliminated? How quickly can we train our own people enough for new jobs? How many new jobs have we created to replace the ones we're eliminating? As even as every company has a right to seek efficiency, but at the end of the day, leadership, policymakers, and even us that are innovating need to have a conscience to understand science is meant to serve and enhance humanity, not to destroy it. So when you apply your scientific knowledge and you innovate, always balance it out. How does it affect humanity? Because we have the choices. It's within our control to decide what we do with our innovation. So I hope you'll be the generation of social scientists. Scientists with a social conscience. Don't worship without sacrifice. God bless you. Okay, if a man is hungry, give him food. God has blessed him when you feed him. Don't be the one that worships without understanding that there are sacrifices required of you in your own capacity in trying to build your community. Don't get into politics without principle. Don't support a man because he's your uncle or he's your auntie, he's your neighbor or he's from your village or because he will bless you if he gets into position. And many people have been disappointed by those things. Let your politics be principled. Let it be based on what is right and what is wrong for the community. Why? Because when the community works, we all benefit from it. Remember, where you live, where you will build your businesses, where you will build your families, that is the community where you will live. And no individual can build the community. Every single individual contributes to what the community is. And except each one of you takes personal ownership to commit to do your part to build the community of the country and the continent that you want to live in, you will not have what you want. Not because God has not allowed it or because it's not possible, but because we have not committed to creating that which we say that we seek. As you move forward, just remember, one of the biggest decisions you'll make in your life is to choose the man or the woman that you will marry. People take it lightly, but it can make or break your life. So with all the ambition and the vision that you have, with all the dreams that your parents have for you, if you marry the wrong guy or the wrong girl, everything can be derailed one way or the other. So don't play with it. Don't marry a fool whether male or female. Have a sense of who you are. And when you have a sense of who you are, you will understand who is the fit for you as the Lord leads you. You will know that it's not about Naira and Kobo. It's not about silver and gold. The son of a rich man is not a rich boy. 
Because only the one that has the cash flow has the money. What's the best thing that will happen? They'll have a big wedding. They didn't have it for you. They had the big wedding for their own image. They will give you a house and many cars on day one. All the cars will get old at the same time. And if you do not have the capacity to maintain or to keep them, you're already in trouble. They can't pay school fees. Cash flow is money to do everything you need to do every day, not for the wedding ceremony. So marrying the son of a rich man is not your solution. Seek to find the bone of your bone. Who can accommodate the vision and the ambition in your heart as a person? Who can be an enabler for you to emerge? Who can encourage and support you? It might not look like it right now, but just understand that people manifest in what? In seasons. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Look for a man that fears the Lord. A man who is responsible and right thinking. He has vision and he has ambition. I guarantee you, he will show up somewhere and you will be glad you met him. There are many that have seemed like it when we were young. Many of those that seemed like it did not emerge to be it. So you have no, you cannot tell who this person will become. But you can test his character, his person, his commitment, his truthfulness, his love for you. And his ability to hold and to encourage you. Especially for the girls, I'm talking to you now. Listen to me. God made them what? Male and female. Every promise of God is for you as it is for the male. God meant for you to fully manifest the best of yourself. Otherwise, guess how it affects our nation? Our population statistics will show you. Women are what? 49.5. Men are what? 50.5. If it's even correct. Okay, let's say 50-50, so we won't have any argument. Only a madman drives a twin-engine plane and flies with one engine when it's meant to perform at its best with two engines. When a nation has a population split of 50-50 and does not maximize the capacity of its women's folk, it reduces, it limits its own productivity as a nation. Why? Because the talent and the abilities that are inherent in that other 50% of the population is locked down, is unreleased. And then the men die under the strain. Because it means you are using 50% of the population to carry the weight of 100% of the population. Your ambition will not be at the same level. All I ask you to do is to be the best of yourself. Not the best of another person. And that's another thing. As you depart now, Yoruba people say, 20 children do not play together for 20 years. So all of you will not emerge at the same level at the same time. Don't worry about that. Don't follow any other person's clock. Follow your time scale. Be the best of yourself at every stage of your life. Celebrate your friends that succeed at a stage. But don't despise or be envious of them because your own time will come. Everybody's time is different. If you follow your own time, you will be successful in your own time. And your success would last for a lifetime and it will be a great legacy. I commit into your hands the greatness and the future of this nation. I commit into your hands my dream and my aspiration for a great nation. I commit into your hands the challenge and the responsibility of building a nation that the whole world would look at and bow.